All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and look at one of the more popular strikes that's out there that people talk a lot about. Um, a lot of people know my background is from a lot of the Russian styles when you look at Kalashnikov system, Zavgorodny, Chevette's, Ross, and so forth. The whip strike is a very powerful strike that can be used as a long range standoff weapon, but it can do a lot of damage in a very short period of time with a very small window of damage. It's very similar to when we use that knife hand chop down, but we're doing it at a distance. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna look at the targets first. We've got the jaw, we've got the nerve running up beneath the jaw. We've got into the neck right in here, we've got the ear. So now we've got a very large range. Imagine for a moment that you're shooting or something like that. And while you're shooting, you don't have to get groups like this every single time. In a stress situation, you're not going to. You just want it this big on target very fast. So it's the same thing with a strike. Now I'm not gonna hit you full speed with it. We'll put on um, gloves for that. But what we're going to look at is, is we bring our hands up. You can put your hands down, you're good. We bring our hands up. When we do this, a lot of people throw the whip strike, they come very wide. What happens when we come wide? We get attacked, okay? We do not come wide. We bring our hands up in a defensive position, engage his psychology, talking with our hands like I've talked about. Once we've got them up there and we're talking to them, we're still protecting ourselves, that's when the biomechanics begin. Now, what's the only weapon that's man-made without any type of gunpowder or anything else like that, any technology that breaks the speed of sound. It's a whip. At the very tail end, the whip breaks the speed of sound. So we are creating a whip out of our arm, and our hand is the tip of that whip. So that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get it right there and pop it or drive it through. So let's take a look at the mechanics of it. When it gets thrown, it is like this. So let's segment it down, shall we? We bring our shoulder up and move your hand like this. Okay? This will get your first movement down because you can strike through, you can bring it up, you can strike across, you can strike from a number of different angles based off of this movement right here. That is more sport of fisticuffs than it is combative striking. The reason is, is because if I do this, I open myself up constantly. The goal is not to open ourselves up. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to get this movement right here. Once I have this movement, I'm simply going to begin working it out. Just like in the helix, just like in the screw. This movement works its way out. There, you bring it out, and then you whip it out. So we're gonna put on a glove, I'm gonna demonstrate it for you so you can see what I'm talking about with the power of it, and we can talk about the mechanics. Remember, we're trying to hit into this area right here. We're not doing this. Anything like that. People talk a lot about the different types of strikes. They're talking about general fisticuffs and striking. They're not talking about combative striking. Combative striking controls movement and it doesn't let anything linger that can get grabbed and injured. So when we talk about combative striking, this first resort, our first time around, is not going to be beautiful things. It is boom, as hard as we can, onto the person, bam, and hitting them. That's where it is. It is not this. That is more of a fisticuff style strike, not a first resort strike. Let's grab a pad, I'll show you the whip strike, and then we're gonna move on to more traditional and orthodox and unorthodox striking so you can see some of the different methods that you can use and adapt them to your goal and what you want to accomplish. Now we're gonna go ahead and look at the mechanics of the whip strike and you can see some of the damage that it does if it actually connects with its target. Now it doesn't always have to connect with the target. You might be aiming for the jaw and you hit the neck. You might be aiming for the ear and you hit the jaw. It's okay. The point is to do the damage in that first resort strike. So if he puts it up, like I said, we're bringing it up here. We're not bringing it out wide. Out wide is a training situation like, hey, look at me, I can do really hard strikes when I bring my arms all the way out. In reality, when I do that, this comes across and it gets me. 
So I can't bring it out there. I want it in here. So if this comes in, I can strike. Now, out here, we're gonna do the whip strike. You're gonna bring your hands up to this point right in here. You're gonna get that movement. Practice that movement. You can see it. You can see the articulation in my shoulder, how much I'm getting, because this is a very quick, fast, powerful, high speed, low drag. There's not a lot of waste in this in order to pull it off. If you don't get as much power as you can, then you're not going to get all the effectiveness of the strike that you want. So when you bring it up here and you hit, you're whipping your hand out there like this. So go ahead and use this movement. Watch me. Okay, so hand comes up. There, you can breathe out, time your breathing. I don't want any trouble. This is my target right here. Right in there is where I'm trying to hit. Bring it back a little bit right there. I'm trying to get to that point. I can still reach it. Here. There. I can still get it when it's out here because I'm driving all of this out in order to reach it. Instead of this, you can see the difference between that and this. It's a very different strike. This versus this. I'm getting that full movement as I'm hitting it. And when I'm hitting it, I'm hitting it right in here. I'm not just hitting the fingers. I'm hitting all of this right in here. Now, go ahead and catch my, my legs when I do this. You can see that I'm pulling it down with me right in there. It allows me to continue that movement into a kick. It allows me to move into my opponent there and already be in there. I can catch the face on the downside and I can be coming across with the elbow. A lot of people, what they do is bring it up. They go, all right, let's do that again, man. That was awesome. Felt really good. We don't want to do that. This is a first resort strike, it's at a distance. We don't want any problems. We're aiming for right in here. And follow it up. Once it hits, we're bringing it around. We're using our footwork to get there. One more time, out there, and coming to it. That's where you want to be with this strike. If you throw this shoulder into it, you're creating what I called a transmissibility cycle back in 2003. I'm transmitting this energy around the spine, through the other shoulder, and out. So with just an arm, there. No movement here, I'm fixing it. There, if I throw this in there, it's a very different movement. So we wanna make sure that we throw that shoulder into it. Boom. There.